after a very long wait, we are finally making our way up to the territories. Without a question, the three territories are Canada's most overlooked places, and to be honest, if you aren't from Canada, there's probably a decent chance you don't even know their names. Even from a Canadian perspective, growing up in our education system, we're not taught much about what goes on up in our northern communities. You know, growing up, I was very fortunate I got to visit Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories and sort of get a glimpse into what life is like in the North. I've had family members spend a significant amount of time living in the North and have been given some insight on what life is actually like compared to what people from the provinces say it's like. So what we're going to do is tackle them one by one because all three are very similar but also very different at the same time. So from west to east, today we are going to start with Yukon or the Yukon. I cannot seem to find a real answer on this one. From what I've heard, there's a pretty decent local divide on calling it just Yukon or the Yukon. So my apologies if throughout this video I switch back and forth or just call it one or the other. Sorry. If you live in the territory, give me the scoop because I, I genuinely cannot find an answer. So here are five things you should know before moving to Yukon, the Yukon, or just the territory of Yukon. Hope you enjoy. Number one, the economy. Now, if you're already decided and set on moving to the territory, you already know this. But if you just started to think or sort of flirt with the idea of moving up north, let's get you introduced to the driving forces in Yukon's economy. First, mining. Everyone's heard of the gold rush, right? Well, today, the territory still remains extremely active in the mining sector. They have expanded into lead, silver, iron, coal, tungsten, and more. Second thing, energy. Hydro energy dominates the territory, but there are also focuses in diesel combustion, wind, natural gas, and solar energy. Third, fishing. There are 24 lakes in the territory where commercial fishing takes place. Fourth, tourism. The incredible scenery, the midnight sun, the northern lights, and its presence on the Alcan Highway have made Yukon an extremely popular place for visitors, leading to them to have a very active tourism industry. And fifth, film. Yukon's film industry is thanks to the incredible scene and incredible scenery which leads crews to the territory to produce films you know like there's photography shoots a whole bunch of other stuff it's it's become a very popular place in recent years number two vehicle maintenance so obviously if you're moving to a remote location you're going to need a vehicle that's a no-brainer but if you're moving to the yukon even if it's white horse you absolutely need to stay on top of your vehicle maintenance. Paved roads deteriorate quicker and are extremely tough on the vehicles. Not to mention that paved roads are by no means a guarantee in many areas within the territory. For example, you're going to take a drive up the Dempster Highway. It's absolutely not paved. It's highly recommended that you keep your vehicle in tip-top shape carry around multiple spare tires at a time and learn how to change a tire yourself if you do not know how to do so already because there's a very good chance at some point in either your adventure up your adventure down or just your time in the territory or honestly in any of Canada's territories you're probably gonna blow a tire so it's just a very good skill to have number three travel this goes for all three territories but I specifically read this on an online forum about living in Whitehorse, so I'll say it in this video here. Once you move to the territory, in the summer it is highly recommended that you travel to as many places within the territory as possible so you can see everything it has to offer. The natural scenery is incredible and there are so many destinations to explore and of course the weather in the summer, believe it or not, is perfect for doing so. Now comes the winter. A lot of locals will tend to head south at least once a year. And when I mean south, I'm not saying go down to Florida, go to California, go to Mexico, nothing like that. 
South, when you live up there, could mean Edmonton. It could mean Vancouver. It could even mean Prince George or Prince Rupert or just anywhere south. Whether it's to explore or just to get away. On the forums I was on, I saw that many people recommend doing this because living in such an isolated place can be very tough mentally and sometimes just a trip to a more populated area can just give you a bit of a refresh that you need to sort of reset your mindset. Just something to consider. Now keep in mind, leaving's not necessarily cheap. Flights, you gotta look for a deal. And driving down is not easy, and in the winter, forget about it. Don't do it. Not recommended. Number four, housing. There's no way of really sugarcoating this, but housing is expensive. Thankfully, wages are higher in the territory, so it is possible to live comfort comfortably. Renting a one-bedroom in Whitehorse will generally cost you about $1,400 a month, and a three-bedroom could be somewhere around $2,300 a month. All things considered, it's not that bad. The cost of buying a home in the territory, generally speaking, costs anywhere from four hundred to nine hundred thousand Canadian dollars. But one of the main issues is availability. Oftentimes, if you go online to look what's on the market, there's not much for sale, and you're not always going to have an abundance of choices. Like seriously, go online right now, look at houses for sale in the territory. You'll see what I mean. Number five, seriously consider the North. Here are some final thoughts I want to share about the North as a whole. I have, like I said, I have family members who lived in two territories for nearly 20 years. While it's not for everyone, that's just, again, there's, you can't sugarcoat that. This, this type of move is not for everyone. The lifestyle can be extremely tough at times due to the cold, lack of sunlight, the isolation, but the experience that you can potentially gain from living in Canada's north is irreplaceable. I was speaking with them a few months ago and they told me they wouldn't trade it for anything in the world and that if they would have you know, gotten a chance to do it over again, a thousand percent they would have. Remember, just because you decide to move up north, it doesn't mean you have to stay forever. Go up there try it make the most of whatever opportunity you may find and just try to enjoy it you may love it you may hate it but you're going to learn a lot about a different part of canada that most people are oblivious to and honestly even if moving up doesn't remotely interest you go visit take a trip discover what the region has experience the culture i promise you it'll be worth it well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It hopefully gives you a bit of insight into the Canadian territories and more specifically the Yukon. I've said it before in other videos, this video does not cover everything. Please do your own research, especially before deciding to take a move like this. Go on Reddit, go on some of the Quora forums, read news articles, try to talk to some locals. There is so much more you can learn outside of this video. So I just wanna make that really clear. I, I've been getting a lot of comments in some other videos lately saying, oh, you missed this, you missed that, you missed whatever. I'm not the only one you can listen to about this. Go get some other opinions, trust me. You definitely want to hear them. Let me know what you guys would like to see me post next. Leave your comments. Be sure to like and subscribe.